So Phase and VP just played at IEM Dallas in what has to be one of the most entertaining games of Inferno I've seen so far in CS2, and I think the new Molotovs might actually help that out. But regardless, it is actually going to be an 11-5 lead for Phase at some point before VP start mounting a comeback, and I don't want to spoil it, but it is an incredibly interesting game. Now in this round, you've got Frozen stacked 4B. He's going to be kind of the, the bait here. If he dies, then they can, you know, maybe bait B VP into a B hit, but if he doesn't die, well, that's great, and now they can do whatever they want. And Rops is playing really aggressive here in mid, which is a bit surprising. In fact, it's probably not what you want theoretically when you're stacked 4B, but there is a good idea behind it. Because the idea is, if they're stacked 4B and Rops is just hiding, then that might actually be a bit of a tell. Maybe VP immediately realize, oh, Rops is usually spotting A when they have multiple A players, and then they end up falling back and, and not running into that B hit after Frozen dies. And that's like worst case scenario, you try and bait to make your opponents push B, and then they get a kill and they don't push B. I wouldn't say you probably want to copy that in a pug or most other settings because you can do something like play truck side lane and just spot boiler take a couple shots and fall back and that's relatively safe and for the most part it's going to get the same job done however when you're playing against teams that are counter stratting and anti stratting i'm sure that the next team phase plays one of the things they might do is they might watch this demo and go oh rob's being alone peaking a doesn't mean they have multiple a players or they might think you know they might get a kill on Rops in another game and try and push A because of that, and they end up actually getting caught because they're thinking, oh, well, maybe they're stacked 4B, we run into it, and they run into a stack. So it might make them more... Uh more tentative in their in the way they're playing in following games. It's just a great way to play at this high of a level, but I don't think in general that's something you necessarily want to copy because you can do it in a more safe way that your opponents won't sniff out. Well, you know, VP is probably good enough to maybe sniff out that while Rop's spotting Boiler, that is a very safe play. He could do that while he's on loan and just fall back into sight, right? Regardless, that was actually a force from VP. It's hard to tell because they only got one kill, but they they did actually full buy there. Uh, no, sorry. They didn't full buy. They saved, but they had one player buy a Galil. And that means that in this round, it, they actually end up with a pretty terrible buy. They've got two Tech Nines. They don't have full utility. They don't have everything they need. And I would argue they probably don't have enough utility to just play a completely standard round. If they use enough utility to safely take apartments and safely take banana at the same time, if they use enough utility to take both spots, there's a pretty good chance they're not going to have the utility to exec a bomb site the way they want. So they're going to have to be a little light on utility in the way they take their their angles and this is probably one of the ways they're going to do it this guy's going to flash i'm assuming fame's going to lead out with the tech nine and frozen gets that's that's rough usually when you look at this type of angle you're expecting one player to be playing anti-flash and the other to be holding the angle and actually they are kerrigan and frozen are both playing perfectly really frozen plays anti anti-flash because he is up top and they he still gets blind oh my god I actually I remember there was a there's a clip of frozen being like looking really confused in this game because I was watching it in the background I was talking with someone and I remember looking at frozen like why is he so confused and he's confused because he just got full blinded while playing anti-flash but by the way the reason you play anti-flash up top there's there's been some debate about this uh specifically at truck or lane should the guy up top be looking or should the guy down below be looking so in theory you would definitely want the guy up top posted and the guy below playing anti-flash because the guy up top has a better angle when the peak actually happens if he if someone actually peaks in middle he's more likely to win that duel and He's, um, the, the guy below is safe, right? So he's not going to get killed while his teammate above is shooting. He's like behind a corner. However, I think in general, it's probably a better idea to have the safe player actually playing, uh, peaking and the unsafe player playing anti-flash. And the reason for that is if frozen on top of sandbags here gets blind, he has nowhere to go unless he drops down directly onto Kerrigan, and that kind of... I, I, I'm not sure why they went so aggressively for your exit here. They do have some money, but it's... That is hyper-aggressive. It works out if they get the kills. Nice shots from Rob's. Okay, so the idea is, if, if Frozen gets blind, his only option is to drop down 
and then he's right next to Kerrigan, it's easy for them to get it sprayed down. However, if Kerrigan gets blind, he just safely backs up behind the corner, and Frozen goes one for none, or, you know, one for one, maybe he gets a kill, and maybe they don't even check Kerrigan. So the idea is that if Kerrigan gets blind, he can be safe while he's blind, and the most likely time for them to peek is while he's blind. And I think the same thing is true for, for Lane. You know, the player up top plays anti-flash because if he gets blind, he's stuck, and if he's stuck, he's dead, and that means if the player below, you know, doesn't just mow down their entire enemy team, they're screwed. So anyways, you because of the bomb plant here, I was I, sorry, I, I was going to say because of the bomb plant, they only got 600 because of the, the change in economy, but they actually won the round. So you actually do have a really good buy, especially because Rops held on to that Galil. You can see they don't have that much money. Rain doesn't have that great utility. Rops has good utility, but Brokey has an op, very little utility. They don't have as much utility as they actually want in this round. So going for an aggressive play is what you expect and they might catch vp off guard by having an off vp not, might not be expecting an off in a round like that where they just it's only 2-1 and the ct's just lost that's like a situation where you often won't have an off and the response from flit is to take a bit of a risk and i like that play from flit it, it, it's an angle there where it looks like maybe they maybe phase is thinking that smoke doesn't cover the whole thing although they should know but the op just made contact in mid maybe it's a 4-1 stack at the beginning so maybe you run into a weak b hold but hopefully i think he's just trying to catch phase throwing utility because phase does one of the things if you watch a lot of phase you might notice is that they love throwing delayed banana utility they don't often throw the early molly or they often don't throw the early molly compared to other teams some teams will throw it almost every round phase phase delay it not like not 30 seconds they'll delay it a little bit a good amount of the time um and and then they'll throw like deep banana takes after like 10 seconds lots of teams do that and the swing from Flit there, the idea is, you know, you might catch FaZe, a team known for throwing that type of delayed utility. You might th catch them throwing delayed utility, especially if they think that smoke covered up the peak and they're they're safe, right? And especially because you know the AWP is in middle, you don't have to worry about an AWP being posted on you. Though, usually, I don't think you'd be worried about that regardless. Um, that's not usually too big of a concern on a round like that where you're honestly probably not even thinking they have an AWP. But regardless, into the following round. Phase is looking pretty good now, and not only that, they've got VP. This is a this is a key round because if Phase win this with a lot of players alive, this really is them heavily establishing themselves in the game where they're going to have another buy up again. They're going to be pretty comfortable, and they're going to start to have a bit of a psychological advantage in terms of things that are working for them and aren't working for VP. And you can start to build a half. Like if B hits are working, you can start to build a half around how you know your opponents are going to respond to B hits, but. The idea here is this is huge for FaZe if they survive with, you know, three or four players. Or if they survive with five, that would be massive. But four is still just fine if Norbert can't get a kill because that means they'll have a pretty comfortable eye on the following round. But if they are to lose two or three three specifically but even two players, it's going to make such an impact on their buy into the following round that I think it has like a it seems really small, but I do actually think it's a like a statistically significant impact on the way the game you know the, the following rounds play out because their buy into the next round if phase lose this is going to be comfortable right they can go for exits like they were taking a bit of a risk when they went for exits at 2-1 i feel like if rops died it would have heavily impacted their buy in the following round but here if they go for exits if they lose this round they're going to have a great buy regardless so they can actually focus on playing you know the best cs instead of worrying about the economy in the following you know this specific round jame of course gonna get an op I wonder if anybody is anybody on an on, on a rifle on an SMG. Nobody on SMGs, so nobody's taking the Sanji treatment. But Jame going for an op, and and VP are going fairly light on their utility. Oh, that is crazy that they both missed. You know, it's funny. It's funny. I don't think pro like you sometimes see noobs with. Th like two players with 30 bullets and I don't think it's that pros never have a spray where they're like they're in the midst of whiffing 30 bullets I think the situation is that you almost never see both pros miss that like how rare is that right so you never see the pros miss 30 bullets because the other pro is just gonna kill them before the whiff gets that bad you know uh and that's just one of those spots where like both players whiff it looks like um but anyways VP's being pretty pretty 
light, let's say, on the banana take. They're using minimal utility. They're just, they're using a couple of flashes, sometimes a molly. They're just trying to take control really fast. And by doing so, they're hoping to draw utility from phase really, really early. But if you look at what happened from phase here, either they got dropped an extra piece of utility, I think they just hold it. This is, this takes some balls. They are just holding on to a, quite a bit of utility from this. Oh, they do get dropped an extra, an extra smoke, but still they wait. It's what, 12 seconds here. You've just got Kerrigan jiggling even after Jame was spotted with an op, which is the only way you can really die while jiggling is an opper peeks out on you and just hits a nice shot. Even after Jame is spotted in exactly the thing you might be worried about, they still, he's still jiggling. He's thinking, well, probably Jame won't come back. And now they have two smokes. So there's really no option here for VP. They have to exec through two smokes. And Brokey is already rotated over because it feels like a B hit. It does, it does, it, you can smell this one. You can feel the B hit coming. Kerrigan just drops a molly down in front. And this is a terrible situation for VP. This is like as good as it gets for FaZe. And as long as they have a bit of utility with them, but the push through the smoke actually from Electronic, it, I didn't catch that, but it's actually huge. But then Rain, oh, the spray down from Rain is beautiful. But that push through the smoke from, from Electronic, I actually think that's like low key genius. Um, because one of the best ways to hold a B hit in this situation, how do you want to hold this B hit? What you want is you want Kerrigan to have a flash. So he throws that molly down, he backs up, he spams a bit through the smoke and then rain is going to make con like what you want is rain makes contact. And I know Kerrigan doesn't have a flash here, but if he did, and maybe there's a flash down on the ground that he could grab rain makes contact, gets a kill Kerrigan's spamming for a little bit. And then Kerrigan pulls out a flash and flashes above rain. And then rain peeks out for the second kill because generally as a B hold, you should be able to get the first kill just on your own. Oh, that's sick from Brokey too. He needs it. Doesn't he? You should be able to get the first kill. It's kind of, it, it's not a gimme, but like generally you should be given the first kill, right? Like it should just generally be yours. And then it's the second kill that's hard. Great B anchors or great sight anchors on any map get two kills. That's, that's great sight anchors. They get two kills a lot of the time. They always get one, but sometimes they get two. And when you look at, um, B on Inferno, the, the easiest way to guarantee two is to have a flash pop off after the first kill. Now... Do you want to hold the flash? Like, if you're thinking, like, you're playing in a pug, and it's like, do I hold the flash? It's like, no, fuck that. Throw the flash. Like, they start putting it, pushing in. Go hide, hide, hide new box. Just tell you, just tell your team to hide new box. And it's like, okay, they're in. Then you flash, right? Like you flash to guarantee your your bad teammates the first kill, which is you know that's the way it is. That's let's let's be real, man. Your teammates your teammates gonna play B, and it's like, should I wait for the flash to, for a second kill? And you you do, and he just dies, and you're like, wow. Uh, not to say that pros never do that. Pros definitely will sometimes flash for the first kill. I just think best case scenario is that you have him in a good enough spot that he feels like you know it, it'll be the site player calling it really. I should be fair. It'll be the site player calling it. If he feels like he's in a good enough spot to get one kill, he'll wait. He'll tell you to wait for the flash. A lot of people will tell you to do that, especially if they feel confident, especially if it's like a great player, like if it's a Robs or a Rain or something, right? Kerrigan, no hate. I love Kerrigan, but you know, if he's holding a site, he might be asking for the flash on the first kill instead because he's, you know, he's just not out aiming a lot of people. Anyways, nice little play there from, so something that, phase does better than than almost anyone is that even when things aren't looking that good they're still willing to get aggressive so like frozen here has 44 health right he drops his flash over kerrigan grabs it and he's still gonna get aggressive for this retake because they know they can't they can't lose this much control this early this consistently Right, so they gave up that control. They gave up that top banana control a couple of times, and that made VP a little, you know, maybe a little over comfortable with that type of like, you know, with that top banana take. They gave it up a couple of times, and then then they go for that retake when VPs maybe a little bit complacent when they're used to already getting that control and not having to worry about it, especially when it comes to you know um, you're playing against a bit of a force buy. You don't want to necessarily because. VP, so the, the idea that I think is important is that VP have taken banana control roughly 
by the way, Frozen should get away here. He just messes up the movement. He like If he gets around that corner, then he's just safe. And maybe he gets spammed down, but Kerrigan probably gets a trade. Kerrigan's in a great spot here, by the way, because he's like here. It doesn't feel that good. It's not that amazing. But like when he smokes this off, if they try and sp swing and spam him because they know he's falling back into that corner, Kerrigan will get the trade for sure if he's out in this type of angle instead of out like here. And out here, he's better. He's going to be able to hold the B hit better. But out here, he's going to be able to sur make sure Frozen survives a bit better. But um, because VP has been taking B so, like, freely, uh, or top, top B so freely, they might have a strat in mind where they take top banana, and then they have enough utility to exec B. But if you, you know... So they might just be pulling out utility, and so you don't necessarily want to let them do that too often. You might want to catch them off guard, especially on this type of round, even though it's risky. Then Rops does give a flash for Carrion to get the second kill, which is perfect, although, you know, he just threw it as soon as he got there, which is also standard. I'm not a huge fan. I don't want to be super critical. I mean, these are pros, and, and I'm not, but I don't think Rops needed to push through here. I think what happened... Oh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Is it? You got a flash. He did get a flash. I just don't think that push through is, is, is quite necessary. I think what happened is he's almost entirely through the smoke. He's like right here as Kerrigan is still alive. And a general rule, I think that's very, I think a very fair rule to generally follow is if you are, um, if you get to the smoke, like if you're in the smoke at the same time as your teammate is still alive on any bomb site, it's almost never a bad idea to go in. It's almost, he's, that's hilarious because Rain is not trying to spam Norbert there. He's trying to spam James falling back into noop, into, into dark and, uh, and, and Norbert just strafes in front. That is unlucky. But, um, yeah, generally on like Mirage A, if you're the connector player, if your player on A is still alive fighting, right? And you think he's going to survive, not just die in two seconds, then pushing through a smoke is generally a good idea. And I think Rops almost committed to it before Kerrigan died. Then Kerrigan died, and he was kind of like, screw it. And he went with it anyways. And this is interesting because because of this smoke, so Kerrigan, I believe, no, it's frozen. It's Rops' smoke. Oh, this makes it so much worse. Rops has a smoke when he pushes through and dies. This is literally the entire reason that, I think the entire reason that VP win this round is because Rops dies with a smoke. If there's no smoke here, this is so much more comfortable. FaZe win this, like, pretty comfortably. But here's the problem. Bro Theoretically, Brokey doesn't really want to be here. He would much rather be on this side, right? Like, you want to go together in a 2v1 more often than not. However, if Brokey just backs up around here, well, if Jame hears it, then Jame can push through this smoke, and then they're clear. FaZe still have to clear both, all... All of these angles, and Jame can just, uh, you've seen this probably if you watch Pro CS, he can hold this angle and just kill them as they're coming through site, clearing out new box and, and back site. Um, so if Brokey groups up, and even if Jame knows it, he can do it for free. But even if Jame doesn't know it, he might just walk through that smoke, right? That's a play that you'd make, especially because you're on like a force. Maybe Jame doesn't even have armor, right? Like maybe, maybe Jame is armorless here. I don't think they know that, right? So... Um, they, they can't really group up, but they can't really wait out this smoke either. <laughs> like waiting out this smoke is really dangerous because new box is so strong. If they had a Molly, maybe they wait out this smoke. I, that's that would make some sense to wait out the smoke if they had a Molly, because then they can Molly new box and there's nowhere for Jame to hide for a, for a long period of time. Um, but actually they don't even know if Jame could be on banana right now, do they? I, it looks like they're assuming he's backside, but if they don't even know if he could be na banana, they like they can't wait out that smoke. They're gonna have to wait out the CT smoke and then go. But Jame is just—I mean, Newbox is just such a strong spot. Newbox is just such a strong spot because, and you might be thinking, why does Brokey come through the smoke before Rain is spotted? Well, think about it like this: What the hell happens? Like, let's say for a second, right? Jame just peeks in on Rain, like. I'm sorry, the cursor's really messed up. And stop telling me the drop key or whatever fixes this. It doesn't. It's just broken. Um, if if James just peeks out and kills Rain CT, then what Brokey's cocked. Like, there's literally nothing Brokey can do to trade, right? So they have to kind of take the risk to, like... They they both have to be making plays at the same time to, to give them any chance of getting any semblance of a trade. So even though, like, it looks bad, the, the problem is that there is no other play. So that is a massive round for VP to win. 
Because that is, you know, that's another round where, where FaZe was about to start stacking up an insane amount of money. Now, Frozen gets flashed or pushed off the angle. And yeah, VP is textbook dominating banana. First gun round, they have the flash, they get the double kill, which is really just unfortunate from FaZe. Second gun round, they take top banana for free. Third gun, um, the force there, they take top banana. They lose a player, but one for one is basically for free because they. It's almost like you would rather you would one for one is good for the T's. Like if you get control and you go one for one, that's like a, a net win, right? So they they they're taking it. Oh, that's a funny place for a chicken to be. They're taking it pretty much for free, and they're not even using a ton of utility to do it, right? Like at least if your phase, like if you draw a couple of mollies and a couple of nades and a bunch of time, because time is an important asset especially on inferno if you if you draw out all of that and then you go one for one you're like yeah mm, you know don't love it but that's fine right but if like vp is just taking it instantly and it is so hard to play the game when you, you're playing from even a 5v5 but like a 4v4 especially with no banana control it's T that's terrifying. That's like the worst situation of um, the worst situation. The worst situation is if you're one v five playing against spin botters. That's the worst situation. This is just like a bad. It's like not good, right? And so um, phase is gonna be forced to, to respond. Phase is gonna have to respond somehow. Terrorists. Um, and and that's the the textbook way to play out a half is that you find something that's working for you. So like the fast top banana control, that's working for, for VP. It's working for them. And so they, you don't run it 10 times and a half, right? Now in a pug, I'm of squarely of the opinion in a pug or especially matchmaking, especially at lower levels, keep doing it until it stops working. Maybe you don't do the exact same thing, but you do the same idea. But at a high level, they know FaZe is eventually gonna try and respond to this. So it's a matter of you run this setup a few times and then you try and like mind game them and run similar setups, but setups that are capable of, of dealing with the inevitable response, you know? Um, there's, de there's tons of options that they could be going for. And this is a good one because what have VP been doing? They've been taking banana, top banana, fairly freely with very little utility, but then they've been waiting. They've been sticking around. If you remember a couple of rounds ago, FaZe held on to their... Kerrigan was jiggling even after Jame was spotted. Kerrigan was jiggling for another 15 seconds or so, and that extra time they got bought by that made a massive difference, right? And so this time, what do they do? Well, they do the same thing. It looks exactly the same pretty much from, from, from FaZe's perspective. Um... And then what do they do? They quickly look for a, a peek onto the bomb site because maybe one of the things FaZe might be doing is they might be setting up a retake top banana. Or, you know, even if they're not thinking about FaZe setting up a retake top banana, that's just a good way to, you know, catch your opponents off guard. You 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 condition them into thinking that that's not going to happen, and then you show them a, a retake. Now, the interesting thing, I've talked about this. If you watch my other demo reviews, this is like, this is like, um, for, I was foreshadowing. Although, like, obviously, I, I, this one hadn't even been released when I'd done this. But this is foreshadowing because what is the problem with submit with sacrificing one player? I'm not saying Jame got sacrificed there. A Jame would never sacrifice himself. Uh, but the problem with sacrificing one player and having, you know, this is a similar situation. You lose one player. And now, now there's a big question mark. Because our phase stacked B. This is exactly how FaZe would play if there was two players hiding, right? If you're hiding, if you have two extra players here, how would you play? Well, for damn sure you wouldn't have them peek and show that VP, show that FaZe, I mean, listen, if you're playing, if you're playing Pugs, I'm sure your teammates are going to peek out like idiots, but, uh, you know, at this level, you're, you're not going to have this guy and this guy, they're just going to hide. They're not going to peek. They're not going to let VP know what's going on. They're going to trust Frozen can, you know, survive or get a kill, right? And and hold it off. And so VP have to go, were they stacked or not? Or if they weren't stacked, would a, ro would a rotate have gotten here in time? And the key is that FaZe knows that. FaZe knows if they're hitting B, we're fucked, we're losing, forget about it. That's, that is the key that you have, to some, you have to be able to accept that is hard to accept. Sometimes you, you need to not rotate because if, a, if the hit is actually coming, you've already lost the round, so you just don't rotate because all you're doing is losing the potential win where they don't actually do that hit, right? So FaZe don't rotate off. They stay doubled up on A, and because of that, they walk in, and the key is that Norbert peaks in apartments, and Rops being here alone with an M4 
That's weird. Now, he might do that, but that is odd. Usually, if you play at apartments, you're playing at apartments with two players. And usually, if you're alone, if you're trying to go for some sort of aggressive play, you might play like this type of angle. You might play under, you might play under, you might play arch. I feel like is like a decent angle. Um, but a lot of the time, you might just play sight or balcony or pit. Like this is very risky because if Norbert wins that angle, Norbert's almost certainly going to run into a sight and he's going to look right like. He's going to check if there's multiple players because at best there's one other player there. So if, if, if Rops is here and he makes this fight and Rops dies, Norbert runs out and the T's either go with him or they can just wait. And if Norbert sees nobody, they come back down and come over to A. And if Norbert sees someone, then they just hit B, right? That, that would be a, a pretty standard way to respond. So it becomes obvious that there was, in my opinion, it, it is clear there was two players A based off of that based off of Rops being in apartments. It's not guaranteed, but it's like very likely there was two players A off of that information. Now, Flit actually makes noise running back, and Rain hears it. Oh, wow. I didn't notice that. So, Flit, Flit makes noise. Now, Rain's got the flank, and the question is always, should I peek instantly, or should I wait? Because if you wait, and they if you peek instantly, they might just be like having someone holding the flank until they're ready to exit. But if you don't peek instantly, they might have someone go, oh, they could be flanking now, right after the exit starts. It's like there's it's it always seems like it's like whichever one I choose, they're always doing that. Um but yeah, now Rain's on the flank. He's got no idea the flank's coming in. He almost misses, but you know, that's that's five seven long range. That is such a well that's this is why I love watching FaZe, man. This is why I love this is why I love watching FaZe. And VP, like, this is like a just a great round from both teams. I think both teams played that round really well. You know, maybe probably Jane shouldn't have died. I I you can make that argument. Now, maybe Jane is thinking to himself because something to keep in mind always, especially when you're seeing clutches like 3v1s and stuff like that. Jane might be thinking. The way, okay, the way I think pros think about this is he's not thinking like, I'm going to miss and then he's going to kill me. They're thinking, I have a big fucking advantage. He's got, he doesn't have the op yet. Let's not let him get the op. But the problem is then Jay misses and then Frozen kills him. Now, I think after Jay misses, he was stuck in the cubby and then he like tried to repeak. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, you, he, you probably could have gotten away with not repeating. <laughs> he probably could have got flashed out or something, but he's also just thinking like, I'm going to hit the next shot. This guy's not an opper. He's like, you know, I'm going to hit the shot. Then we're going to insta convert the round. And this is what I mean by the way pros think in clutches. If I hit the shot, we just take B insta convert the round rounds over. Don't even have to think about it. Right. And then you, you maintain, you, you maximize how quick, like, you, you don't waste extra utility, you don't waste extra time, you don't have the ability, like, your opponent, you don't have to go back and clear apartments and, like, all this other shit, right? You just, like, win the round right there. That's the only arguable, like, play that could have been changed. I think everything else in that round made, was perfect, like, made perfect sense. Maybe Norbert could, like, jiggle the farmers, I don't know. Then you're really getting into nitpicky territory. Um... Because there's other ways Norbert could have died there. I, I I think that was just a great round. And I just love the way FaZe, like, pivot in the mid-rounds. They're so active in the mid-rounds to catch their opponents off guard. And every... The thing is, every player on FaZe knows these... These types of macro plays. These types of, like, this means that. It's easy to see when you're spectating. It's easy to see when you're a coach. And it's, it's easy to see when you're a player, too, when you think about it. It's about noticing it immediately and being able to immediately respond. That's really hard. That's the thing that's impressive from phases how just every single player just constantly understands the macro uh, the macro implications of every move that they're doing it's it's awesome anyways interesting kind of partial buy here they've got glocks on some players and ak's on others um so looks like they're just sacrificing potentially a little bit of money so that they can have a they're gonna have a slightly worse buy in the following round but they're gonna um they're gonna do damage they're this is key. I mean, it is Inferno. Inferno is a map where I'd say almost the most of any map, almost, uh, you need utility. You just absolutely desperately need to have utility. And so, um, if you can, if you can damage the CT economy, that is so key to giving yourself chances to win. This is another play from Kerrigan that's really interesting because theoretically he should probably just fall back, right? He should probably just back up, give it up and, and play sight, but they don't have any smokes. 
and no smokes, you're eventually going to have to take some aim duels anyways when you're holding the site. And so going for that type of play, that type of flash peek, not only, it buys time for Frozen to get there, delays your opponents, and it, it takes away some of the problem of not having smokes, right? Like not having that much utility. Um, Frozen just gets there. If if Kerrigan doesn't go for that peek, then um, Frozen probably just gets smoked off before he can get in and get in through, get in through there. But if Fro if Kerrigan doesn't die, they might not even commit, right? Um, but yeah, nice little play from Kerrigan. Usually, I mean, safe play. If he's got a smoke there, I think he falls back pretty much every time. The 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 key is like there's so many plays, that it, there's so many um, variables. In, in all of these situations that make plays good or bad. And it's hard to like, that's why watching pro CS is sometimes dangerous because it's hard to see why that was a good play when you could just fall back. And part of it is that he just doesn't have a smoke, right? And and you kind of really need a smoke if you want to fall back. Um, but part of it is also like, you know, you gotta, you gotta take risks sometimes. You can't just permanently be passive or your opponents just know how to play against you a little too easily. Oh my god. Rops is so good, dude. It's unreal. How good this guy is. Okay, that was a really interesting play. Oh, okay. Norbert should probably be getting that. That's a crazy jump. Oh my god, phase is so good, dude. This was a really interesting round because I think this is still... This goes back to the way this game has been going. You know, the way this game has been going... VP have been controlling banana. So what's something you can do when you control banana? You attack arch side because your opponents might start 3B, right? Starting 3B is very common if you if you want to overstack towards banana. And FaZe do love stacking 3B quite often. So eventually they're going to do that. VP timed it right. They went for a play. And it's not that the play wasn't good regardless, right? It's still going to be fine if there's 3, 3A. But... You're, you're kind of thinking like, okay, we've been controlling Banana. We've been running them down at Banana very aggressively. Odds are very high. They're going to start a third player B. Now is a great time to go for some sort of like hit where we where we isolate <coughs> we isolate arch side. Where there's either one player with no rotate or there's no players a lot of the time. So, <coughs> again, VP just go back to the fast Banana control been working really well for them and i think phase are finally actually going to be able to combat it i mean it's not really a full buy from phase or from vp right now so phase have the weaponry advantage and they still i mean actually phase do basically lose this they lose a player they go one for one but they used a ton of utility which matters like i think it matters more on the ct side than the t side because you know you can't necessarily use all of your utility utility in one spot Right? If you trade two smokes, the T's can rotate in, uh, three other smokes over there. It's a lot harder for the CTs. Um, yeah. But they don't know that they did that much damage to Frozen. If they knew... So if you just had perfect info and you knew that you hit Frozen for 92, that changes the vibe of this round, I think, quite a bit. I think this actually that would actually really change the way this round plays out. Um, I'm not quite sure. I mean, there's just, it would just give them a lot more options. They would feel like, you know, they would feel much more in control of this round. Here, I think Jame is just going to spot Robs. Oh, yeah, he spots him. Yeah, he spots him. So, this is the most awkward round ever because these guys just walked past Robs. Robs probably told his teammate to rotate to B because he had control of like the mid cross. Then he gets spotted and he doesn't know he got spotted. So. Norbert just comes back around to clear him out, but Rops is just like, he's just aware. He's like, hold up. It's been a little too quiet. It's been, I can hear the Jaws theme track starting to play. Burda, burda. Gotta clear things out. Oh my, that's just a flick too. Yeah, he's not even ready for that. Yeah, he's, he's looking at the, he's still, he's completely not ready for that. Uh, that kill would have, that kill would have closed this round out entirely. Still, 2v3. This is close. You would really consider saving here if you didn't have money. And they don't have a ton of money. Oh, but they did get there in time. Yeah. Does Frozen go for this? Eight health? That is some balls to go for this. The way I'm thinking is like most people are probably going to go for a probe here. See if you can get something. See if you can find someone re repositioning. And then if you can't find anything, you might consider saving. Um... Oh. Because they, 
Oh, it's the last round of the half. Oh my god. Oh, dude. I was like, yeah, this is like confidence. I was, I like even looked at the money. I was like, oh, if you have lots of money, you go for this, right? Oh my god. This is like that that um from the from the Z10 demo, the zero tenacity demo, where I'm like, why does he do this play with like that smoke? Like, is this like is this like a standard smoke play? Like, did I do I just not know this? Like, cause I I. I <laughs> didn't remember looking at that strat for a while i'm like is this just like a st maybe it's a counter strat maybe it's an anti strat and i just pull up the demos and it's like no this is just how everyone reacts to this to this, this utility it's like wow wow and i'm like oh my god i even knew this too as soon as i saw it in the 2d i was like oh my i've seen this strat so many times i know exactly how this plays out i just didn't fucking i just haven't seen it in game because to be like full transparency I don't really play the game that much anymore. I've I played for like I've played like twenty plus thousand hours of CS. Now I'm just happy to coach now. You know, I'm like happy to coach and make content. So I don't really play. Right? So I don't see a lot of the time I just don't see this stuff in game. Like I'm not thinking of like the exact you know, what this exactly looks like from a first person perspective. A lot of the time if I'm coaching I'm watching demos from a two D top down kind of like radar perspective on like certain um, demo viewing sites. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, if you play with me, by the way, don't expect me to be good. Okay, I'm face at 10, right? But, like, I'm not good anymore. I Like, literally, I my I, yesterday I played my first two pugs since May, okay? I, I always feel bad. That's, like, part of the reason I don't play is because I play and people recognize me and I play terribly because I, I like... The last time I was playing regularly, like every day, CS was like 2020, right? Like I'm just, I'm much more happy to just like coach teams. Like if I have time, if I have free time, I'm going to coach it, like coach an advanced or an ECL team or whatever. Like, um, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to start playing every day. It's just, you know, I don't have the time to grind anymore. I don't, have the, I don't have the interest in grinding anymore. And I don't like playing when I'm, like, so much worse than I used to be. So, if you ever play with me, expect me to not be very good. <laughs> please. Please don't. Please don't be disappointed. I just... I used to be good. I promise. I, was, I used to be good. Austin. I was watching this with Austin. And he was... He was amazed by this. Okay? He was amazed by this. He goes, three lefts and a right in the smoke. I feel like this is just what... Doesn't this what everybody does? I was kind of trolling him, but I, I feel like this is what most people do. I guess you kind of default to just five lefts, right? But the three lefts and a right is much faster if you know the guy's full HP. Actually, there's no reason not to. Actually, I take it all back. There's no reason not to do that. You left click someone three times in a smoke, just right click. Because <laughs> it's not... If, if, he's, if he's not low HP... Like, it, like, if you would four left them, it's, it should be a, just about the same speed to five, to three left right versus four left. Or versus, yeah, versus four left. The only problem is, so the downside of that is that, small tip, people, I, feel, I don't know, at the same, at the same time as almost everybody knows this, I feel like a lot, all, maybe almost nobody knows this, I feel like it's one of those things people just forget maybe over time. Um... The left click is has longer range than the right click. So I've been in situations many times before where I've tried to left, left, right through smoke and um, missed the right click. And that's the worst. <laughs> that That's how you lose in embarrassing fashion. So honestly, I feel like you probably just, depending on the timing, if you need to, like, if you're risking it because of the timing, it's like, I need to risk this because I think he's got the defuse. If I five left, do it, right? But like, I don't know. You do add in that extra little risk of like you could miss the right click and then you go back to two more lefts. That's a real waste of time. That's a lot more time, right? Like five lefts versus three left right. That's a small amount more time. If you miss, you're fucked. Okay, so Kerrigan's here. <laughs> he hits him with the smoke. That's hilarious. Okay, that is, yeah, that is wild. Usually you probably aren't playing that spot with only one player. Um... But it is an anti-force buy. Oh, I'm frozen. Just spam them too. It is an anti-force buy, so it could be an, a lone player. But you can tell they're like they're worried about a second player being there. But if there's two players there and there's players B, odds are pretty high that there's like only one pit or none pit. So that spam really said I think a lot to to phase. I think that spam 
um, probably confirmed everything they were thinking. And after they get that spam, they're immediately like, yep, time to go into A. And VP is just going to hold on to their guns, which is probably what you want to be doing here. Uh, some people have been critical of the idea of how much you have to think about the economy in CS2. But I don't think that's ever been... I think people just weren't thinking about economy enough in CSGO and MR15. Um, I think the game would have been better for it if people thought more about the economy in MR15. It would have given more competitive games um, and the, the, the better team coming out on top more often. Now, here's interesting. Did VP reforce? It looks like they reforced, except for Jame is saving up. There's no... Um, there's no Sanji to save for him. He's saving up to get an op potentially next round. So they're going to reforce. This is interesting. It is something that will catch the T's off guard. However, the T's, the CT's had three players, right? Three players alive. So the T's are still going to be playing as if their opponents have <coughs> a pretty reasonable buy. Regardless. That's a pretty solid nade, by the way. I, does Norber have armor? Did he just, yeah, okay. I was thinking, did Frozen just hear that nade hit him? That would be interesting. Um, bit of a risk in the way FaZe are taking mid, but that's fine. They're probably definitely not expecting a, a FAMAS. I think that's a new buy, isn't it? FaZe is doing a bit of a risk. This is something I mentioned from Liquid, I think, on their Inferno game, where Twists let up, right? Or was that a FaZe game, and I'm, I'm thinking wrong? Where Twists let up, and Twists got the kill, and it was a risk, but there's a reason behind that risk. If he gets the kill, it really changes things, and it makes the round so easy for the T's to win. But if he dies, it can turn very quickly into a situation like this, where, you know, a multi-kill from anyone on CT side win almost basically wins in the round. Now, Brokey's stuck in sight, and he's just he's just trapped, and the CTs, they know it. This is smart from VP to try and chase him down before the rotate can get over, but Brokey survives just long enough. Yeah. Man, this is a great game. This really is, like, both teams are just playing really well, I feel like. So... Brokey knows he has to survive, but you can't just hide in this corner. Just hiding in that corner isn't... They're just going to swing on you, and they're going to have such an advantage because you just, you just jump over this box, and you, like, jump out, and, and you're stuck in a corner. Just the geometry of this is terrible. You're just fucked, right? You're just dead. So you can't just sit in that corner, but your goal is to survive. And that's another one of those situations. I think it's, it's another one of those situations where... Um... You know, if you die there in a pug, your teammate's like, why are you peeking, bro? You should just hit for my rotate. It's like, well, yeah, I was trying to survive. It's just like that literally hiding. It's same in like after plant scenarios. People are people will tell you, play the bomb. You got to play the bomb. Just play the bomb. Why do you peek? And it's like, yeah, I I do playing the bomb. Yes. Thumbs up. Good. I yes. Do that. So don't rush at them. However, playing the bomb doesn't mean hiding like you get in crossfires you still have to be in good positions to play the bomb you, you get into good crossfires you you maintain control you don't just hide that's like i see sometimes people like play the bomb and they just full hide and then the, the the retake comes in and they just clear all the angles and you're in the worst angles ever and they just kill you and it's like okay so you played the bomb quote unquote frozen 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 I've missed that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be a hundred. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I've missed that many times. That is a, a devastating miss. Miss though. Like confidence-wise, it just is the worst feeling ever. It's such a free kill. And if they get that kill, that round's just completely over. That setup just crumbles instantly if the player on top orange just dies. It's just so so over. It's crazy how over it is. I think I said 11-5 at the beginning of this. Um, hopefully, I remember to edit it to say 12-5. Because I think it was 12-5, not 11-5. It was 11-4 if it was... Not 11... It's definitely not 11-5. That's for sure it wasn't 11-5. Until now. Because it was 11-4 a second ago. So, VP really felt like they got the better of the banana duel. For the most part, on their CT side. FaZe was giving it up. And when they were fighting for it, it did not, did not go well for them. And I think the same is true on their CT side as well. That for the most part, I think VP get the better of this banana control now the a key difference is that phase taking this the last few rounds they've been taking it with two players not with three 
Uh, phase or VP was generally committing a third player over to th help throw utility to full take top banana. We'll see how Phase do it on gun rounds because this is a force. And they, 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 they again, I mentioned this in the first, the second round on the first half that, like, you know, you, you can't use all the utility you want when you're on a force. You have to, you have to take some risks, right? To, to take control of things. You have to find somewhere you have to take some risks. And where you take those risks is where you hope that things are lucky and you don't die. So it seems like FaZe took a risk so that they could go for that later, later arch play uh, where it looks like they might have been trying to split B. But they still didn't, they didn't even have perfect utility for that. And they ran into op the optimal setup to hold that. <laughs> like the full straight up double up arch, not even doubled up like in a, in a setup where the, the T's could isolate either side. They were like in the perfect double up to deal with that. They just ran into a brick wall. But they still have Brokey with the AWP, and they go for the Reforce. This is dangerous, you know? This, this, it gets dangerous in these spots. And VP, they will go for the aggressive play. That's what FaZe, I don't, FaZe only, did FaZe go for that at all on their T side? On their CT side? I don't think they did. So FaZe is looking for this play. They're looking to set Brokey up for this play to go aggressive on Banana. The, the, um, the Zywoo play is what you'll usually, what people, well, at least in NA, I see people call it the Zywoo play. Where you try and jump on top of the logs or the barrels now as early as possible. But some good utility, and they don't have a smoke for this. Oh, they do, actually. Never mind. Frozen had a smoke for that. But, as always, I always think, uh, not always, but generally I think aggressive plays where you use, you use utility to get aggressive. You don't just run at them, but aggressive plays where intelligently aggressive plays as a team where you use some utility are almost, they're by far my favorite way to play anti-ecos because your opponents simply do not have the utility to deal with the, to deal with what you're throwing at them and also have good takes for the bomb site and every other angle. They're going to have to either hold it poorly without, you know, using flash. And I think FaZe might not have had flashes like window flashes. They might have too many players in that area and they might hold it well, but when they hold it well, they then don't have utility to actually take the bomb site. And so you see FaZe run into A with no utility to take the bomb site. That's just an inevitability. Now, if, if VP played back, if VP played on site, FaZe don't use that smoke that they had to use for the smoke. They don't lose a player that maybe had utility as well. They probably don't, I think, Frozen banked the flash off a wall or something, right? Like, they don't use all this utility that they use to hold banana. And because they don't use that utility, they might have a good A take. I think this is a pretty uneventful round. They're just going to kind of look for picks. VP Kerrigan's in library, and he, he he's going to try and peek off to trade, which is a smart play. But VP knows he's in library, I believe. So Norbert gets that first kill, and he's ready for the trade. And just nice play from Norbert. Nice, nice little... Nice little spray down. Kerrigan has 10 assists. That's crazy. Usually... <laughs> Not to not to trash Kerrigan, but I generally think that if you have that many assists, usually, like, if your teammate has that many assists and they're like, dude, I have so many assists, it's crazy. Go, yeah, you have that many assists because you can't shoot them in the fucking head. If you shot them in the head, you wouldn't be getting assists, Derek. This is, uh, the timing here is crazy from Electronic because Rain comes through underpass. Oh, it's his own flash! Oh, I thought this was a CT flash. I thought it was like, oh my god, that timing is insane. This is actually... So, Rain, I, they they showed the comms from this round on the broadcast, and I remember hearing it. They hear Electronic at bench. They're, I don't know. I think they're not 100% sure. He goes, I think I heard one bench, or something like that. And they hear this, so Rain comes underpass because they know it. And this flash from Brokey is going to land behind Electronic and in front of Rain. That is, wow, that sucks. Now, the fact that it lands behind electronic might not be relevant. I'm trying to think. Yeah, if you just know one guy's bench and he doesn't have support from a teammate, you have a guy come through underpass, he's screwed. He's dead. Like, almost, he's he's screwed, right? They're trying to double peek him. So I don't think the flash is even meant for electronic. 
I think the, the general point of that flash is to make sure that Jame isn't supporting him because that's how you die, right? Jame's supporting him. You try and double peek. The guy up top gets opt, and the guy underpass gets killed by electronic. That's probably the main way that that goes wrong. So I don't, I don't know if that flash... I'm going to lean to... Like, I, I haven't seen that flash before, but I feel like it's probably... If, I feel like this is one of those things where it's like, yeah, that, that's exactly how it's thrown. And I can see definitely see the logic. If someone wants to tell me it's it's a missed flash, though, that would be interesting if it was. But it, it seems to make perfect sense. Why did I do that? Oh, sorry. But it's not supposed to blind your underpass player. I think the timing was just a little bit off, or maybe it's supposed to land a little bit lower or something. Yeah. So, in general, VP has been, again, controlling Banana. Now, FaZe often play outside of Banana. They're not a team that plays inside of Banana nearly as much as a lot of other teams. And I think that's pretty strong now. Like, you can go into Banana, theoretically, you can go into Banana more safely now, because the Molly can't get... Now the Molly, the smaller Molly, doesn't get both corners. However, on the other hand, on, as a T, you can retake Banana with so little work, with so little effort. Because you can molly, your, the team molly still, as far as I know, still takes up both cubbies, right? So the CTs have to put in all this work to take banana control, and the Ts are like, joke's on you, I've got one molly that clears out both cubbies, and, you know, like, it kind of sucks. But I think FaZe, just in general, don't like going in banana that much. They might change it up with the new mollies. They might like to go in banana, they just felt like it just wasn't feasible. But here, perfectly timed molly from the CTs. Perfectly timed molly from the CTs. Perfectly. I cannot emphasize how perfect that molly was. And that just completely destroys this push. His phase was already in the midst of executing. They were already mid-execute when that molly lands. So the molly actually pushes the execute. It, it destroys everything. Because they're like, they get spotted. It's just unfortunate they get spotted though. Electronic spots him. He knows they're on like an eco. So what are you doing on an eco? This is exactly the type of play you go on an eco. Like a, an apartments pop. He had support though. Key. He did have support. So pulling out the molly wasn't dangerous. A lot of people make that contact. Pull out the molly instantly. And die. Because the apartments pop. They just run out. And apartments pop on the fly. And you have nobody else with you. And you just like get caught with the molly in your hand. He had support. So he threw that. And that. Um, he threw that. And it was safe to throw that. And then the exec. They're already throwing flashes as he mollies it off so they can't cancel that timing is pristine pristine and that's the perfect play to make when you see that it's, it's like you know they're on pistols you know that phase love to go for these little kind of pop plays these mini execs on on, on those, types of, those types of rounds lots of teams do but phase definitely do and so you you just prevent that play from happening that you know is likely to happen Kerrigan, i don't know if he saw that guy backing up he spammed like he was trying to spam the the player in the cubby you might have just been slightly blind and not seen that guy backing up. That's funny. So, phase outside of banana. VP, you know, they're getting the better of it. But just because you're controlling banana, if you have to use too much utility to control it, that doesn't mean everything's all hunky-dory. It's not, you know, it's not perfect. Because you do have to use a lot of utility to take banana. And now you've got Jane, no smoke. Flit, no smoke. Now, Jame, an op here and no smoke, still good. Because you should still generally get that kill. And that is a fucking quick shot. Don't expect your teammates to make, to get that shot if you're playing in a bug. Don't expect your teammates to hit that one. I'm not hitting that one. But I'm old and bad. and Whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a quick shot. But then... Then FaZe is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Because they just have to guess. Is is VP stacking 4A, which is likely? Or did they rotate did they have a second player rotation? Because James could James could always be playing car and also have a player in one of the cubbies. That's a really good way to play. Because you see an opera car, you might be tempted. One of the best ways to deal if you know an opera is solo car, right? You might one of the best ways to deal with it. Group up here, walk close, flash, and you just chase his ass down. And he's going to get a kill, almost for sure. Like, he, he can fall back here and, like, post here. Although, you can you should probably flash off this angle, too. But he can fall back. There, there are angles where he'll get, he'll probably get the new box. He can get the new box safely um, if he just runs straight there. He will he should be able to get a kill. But there, he's going to be alone. And then you just play the 4v4 after plan or whatever, right? 
So if you know an opera's car, you that's a great way to deal with it. And for that reason, CT teams will often keep their second player there. Sometimes they'll keep him where Fame is, like, and they'll throw he'll be, or sometimes they keep him like here, ready to throw a flash. Sometimes they'll have a player CT often ready to throw a flash sometimes they might have a player sandbags that just hides there's lots of different options but that's the reason that you often see an op b with a second player because there is an obvious counter to, to an op b i mean it's not a perfect counter but there's an obvious response to seeing an op b and you have to be worried about it all right so phase do they change things up they try and get aggressive on banana they don't they win this one obviously they don't take almost any damage and they get the kill and VP are going to go for a triple re- I love this. This is such a cool play. Triple regress. Jane gets spotted. Oi! The molly. The molly gets two. Okay, so they can still cancel. Face can still cancel. But I don't know if canceling is the play there. Canceling is an option. But the canceling is, is- There's always some danger to canceling. Now here, Rain can go anywhere. And here's the AK spray. Doesn't he know? Don't they know there's that? Was there an AK down somewhere? How does do they not know? That's weird. I I mean I uh, the, the answer the reason it's okay. The answer is Rain thinks that Jame could have had an AK, like could have picked up an AK. That must be the answer. I'm just confused because I don't think that's like possible, right? Like he should he. he the question I'm confused about is, does he know that it's not possible for Jam to have picked up an, an AK? Because I don't think it's possible for Jam to have picked up an AK. But, um, yeah. The the wait, he still does wait, right? Like, he delays there, and that forces the 1-1 one, one split, which makes it a lot easier to win the clutch. You just have to win 1-1v1, one, one one, and then you're at a massive advantage in the second one. But, yeah. I mean, he could have played it almost the same anyways, even if he knew that that wasn't Jam. But he could have, he, he was like staring at the flank, right? That's that's kind of what's confusing. If he knew that wasn't Jame, he still could have like stuck around. Here, ooh, nice shot from Frozen. It is 12-11 by the way, so it was 11-4, the comeback from 11-4. And FaZe kind of playing the way they have been for the majority, sorry, I was just, I was just thinking about that, thinking about what was, what was going on there. Um, anyways. Faze doing more or less what they've been doing all along. They've got the flash from Kerrigan, which is like the new window flash. Frozen sitting around the corner waiting for the right timing. Swing off the flash. The flash isn't necessarily going to blind everybody. You're going to swing over that opera angle a lot, though. Like, I do not think Jame was blinded here. He's just, you know, he's just holding a somewhat narrow angle because you're looking for like oppers or like a, a jiggle. You're worried also, you crouch here a lot of the time because you're worried about that player peeking on top of logs. It's like a concerning angle and he just, he hits him but he doesn't get the kill. So Frozen turns up the aggression and he gets the perfect timing on Jame. That little delay, that little delay you catch Jame because this is just like a psycho psychological thing, right? Jane is going to be ready for Frozen to continue forward because there could be multiple players here and he could just be going to, to like trying to rush the site. G2 does this sometimes. They'll set up Nico where Nico will get really aggressive and um, Navi is the first team I saw doing this. The the um, Well, not the first team ever, but the a team that I saw ab abusing this back in like 2019 where they would send in uh, Electronic. Um, they would send in Electronic and they would do these execs where it was like, a, a very it looked odd but the exec was one player is gonna we're gonna dump a shitload of utility to get one player a lot of really good fights so it's like flash him around a corner flash him around the next corner smokes pop as he's swinging he catches players that are blind and players that aren't yet repositioned by because the smokes like the smokes bloom as he's running out so they they have to reposition through the smokes and he's already in front of them and they're like oh the smoke just bloomed i can get out through this and i can get ahead of this and like still fight but the smoke just bloomed, but he's already out, and so he's already shooting at you as you're coming through the smoke. Um, I think we used to call them, like, electronic plays. But G2 does this. I've seen G2 do this with uh, Nico on this map. No, not exactly like this, but plays where the goal is 
our first player is not, he's like the entry, but he's not a traditional entry. Traditional entry is first player is not supposed to really get any kills typically. And it's the second player is going to be chasing him, like following down the same exact pathing and making sure that he trades. But these are a fundamentally different style of play. Not these, but like in theory, FaZe could be going for this fundamentally other style of play that G2 sometimes go, go for, where they're like fast execing and trying to get frozen some kills. Or they could have a second player with them as well. I, I just got hyped because I remembered like this like super cool type of exit. So what does James do, right? James posts up, he's ready for it. Then he takes a shot and then he posts up, he's ready again. And then, then it's like, okay, Frozen isn't peeking me now. Then he mollies. Like then he throws the utility. That's generally what, that's the general way you want to be doing things. Now the funny thing here that I thought is um, Fame is actually typically their B player. Fame actually does generally play B. So I was kind of surprised that uh, that Frozen wasn't ready for him here. He's kind of ready, but like I would be, it's, it was crazy he wasn't hard clearing everything. But if you look at this from Fame's POV, this actually isn't a, that easy of a shot. So of course, Frozen's just trying to get control as quickly as possible, especially because he does not smoke CT. He is generally expecting a second player. He just kind of like looks away for a second. I'm like, why do you look away? But if you look at this from Fame's POV, it's not an easy shot. And then Frozen just dumpsters him dumpsters them right after and this round is instantly over this is such a carry moment for froze this is like a dude this is nico moment dude that, that was such an incredible play when phase literally can't get anything going they're getting destroyed for like seven rounds in a row how many three six eight rounds in a row eight rounds in a row they're getting dumpstered I don't know why I had to count that. It was 11-4. Why did I just do the math? Why did I have to count? What the fuck? Why, why did I count that? It was 11-4. I knew it was 11-4. It was 8. Like, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, for like eight rounds in a row, and then Frozen just gets in a good spot, swings out. Dookie's on the first player and has the confidence. He has the confidence. That's why I'm, I try not to call things like... I try to be fairly... Fairly chill on calling things misplays. Because, in theory, Frozen gets that first kill last round, and he could just hold that. You have a 5v4. You're in a good spot. He doesn't need to get aggressive. He just play the 5v4, and his team has an advantage. They should probably win the round. But um, that's not enough of an advantage to, like, say that you can just play passive and you're given the round. Now, if it's 5v3, then you're thinking, yeah, how do I not lose, right? But I don't think one-man advantages are almost ever situations where you, you switch from thinking, how do we win this round to how do we not lose this round? I think that's, like, a key, a key moment is what situations are you at such an advantage that you just need to not fuck it up, right? And a 5v4 is not one of them. So he, even though they're technically at an advantage... They are not at nearly enough of an advantage to say that Frozen shouldn't go for a play if he's got a good read, if he's got a good vibe, if he has a good idea of what a good, uh, of what how he can catch a player off guard here, uh, like that. And he had a he had a good read. I mean, he he knows the timings that that James going to be ready for. It's just typical player timings. You you see a player, you're you're ready for the trade. You wait a second, and then you throw your utility. It's very standard. It was a really nice play from him. Then once he got that, then he's just trying to secure the round. And it's still not about how do we not lose this round. It's how do we secure the round. Because it's, uh, it's, it's T Inferno. T side of most maps, you usually... It's like once you get to the after plant, that's when you, I think, can start be thinking, how do we not lose this round? I think until you're in the after plant, I think you're almost always thinking, how do we win this round or how do we secure the round? Which I guess is similar. Like, how do we secure the round is how do we not lose this round? But how do we secure the round is like, how do we make sure that we convert this round and not... Because the key is, if, if Frozen gets the second kill and then waits, VP could just stack three guys on one bomb site, and if you run into that, you lose. So, like, securing the round is, like, making sure that they don't have time to rotate into a stack. You can you can catch them. Even if he dies there, you're catching them, you're forcing them to only have one player on B, and making sure that either they have one player on B, and you can still go A, because the rotate's probably coming in, or, you know, you, you end up hitting B, but you, you lock them into that setup that you know they're in. That information will help you secure the round pretty heavily. So, phase... Back to getting destroyed on banana. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's the delayed banana take that FaZe themselves love to do. And the molly frozen stuck. 
Kerrigan just doesn't, he just, does he just not throw the molly at the right moment? The mo the flash just doesn't come in time. That's the problem. Here's the flash. Mm. Is it the flash that's delayed or should, is, is it the jiggle? Like if Frozen just hides, is he safe? I think he's like not fully confident in the flash. Uh, that's that's nice from Flip. It is nice. I don't even know if the flash is late. Maybe the flash is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit late. But it's just like a really good route from Flit that really catches Frozen. And Frozen jiggling there. Part of the reason you jiggle is not that it's like, oh, he's, that he died because he jiggled there. But part of the thing is like, if you don't jiggle, the guy just gets into the right angle, sees you, and you can't move. And even if he gets you, even if he gets blind, you're dead because he just continues shooting you while he gets blind, right? So you try and jiggle so that he stops to shoot at you, and then he gets blind, and then you peek on him so he can't kill you while you're while he's blind quite as easily. Uh, it's yeah, it's just a nice uh, it's a nice nice route from Flit. He gets there very fucking fast just in time But maybe Kerrigan could have thrown out a tiny. I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think that's just fine. It's just You hope that you have the ability to throw that a tiny bit quicker Or alternatively part of the reason this is a dangerous play It's it, it is a bit dangerous because running down here if someone's T stairs, they can kind of, that's where they're going to spam. They're spamming on this guy. Like when those mollies land, they're spamming. Specifically, they're going to be looking for that guy that's running down that lane. So it is, there is risk behind that play. So here, Kerrigan just walks up. And this is a, this is a typical Kerrigan moment where you walk through and you try and, he tries to draw a kill so that you can get either some information or draw a rotate. That's really what he's looking for. If he can open up a kill, he might prompt a slight rotate. And even without a kill... He does turn this into a round that, you know, Rain really should have got that kill. Oh my god. This is so awkward. They do catch the right timing, though. And then Rops. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Yeah, so, he even though he doesn't get a kill, he still forces James. Like, James still pivots over. And it's still a situation where... Like, they're almost given a kill because of that. Because it seems like such an insane play. And it is kind of a crazy play. But that's like... Vintage care. I, 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 some people, I've seen so many comments on my Stewie video. There, count, Take a shot every time Vu says vintage. I really did say vintage. A fuckload. But... That is like vintage Kerrigan, where he just like, he just finds like, it's a 4v5, they had terrible utility, they had barely any time, they, like, that was just a losing situation. They were just straight up in a losing spot in that, in that round. They were just, I think they were just fucked. They were just gonna lose that round. And Kerrigan walked back, I think what he was walking back for, I think a lot of what he was walking back for is because, because VP had taken Banana... That is exactly what he did. I know the caster's question this one. I remember the reason I'm thinking about this so much is because the caster's question is one like what what is Kerrigan doing? Because they're even if he gets a kill, they're like, are they gonna be able to go back? But I think the the concept is that VP had taken banana, and so he's thinking to himself, how do I make sure that they're not just five A or they're not four one? Right? How do I how do I try and draw them out of that? So he, he goes back and he looks for the information because if this is completely empty and they don't smoke him off. Maybe he walks in. Maybe he gets to here and he's like, okay, guys, come back, right? He could still... That's still possible to call if he gets that far forward. Because VP could just be 4-1ing and playing, like, retake with, like, an opera here or something. That would be... That would be not standard, I don't think. But it is possible. But it's also, like... Imagine the scenario where Kerrigan walks in. There's one player and he just duels and he just gets the kill. They just insta-win the round. Because they get, Kerrigan gets that kill, and VP double rotates. Like, they just instantly, James gone. Instantly, you hear a second guy rotating. Like, they just double rotate, and you just fucking win. Bam. In, in, round over. If he gets a kill. If there's only one player there. And he even make, even if he makes contact, then there's only one player there. There were two players there, and they smoked him off. That is not what you're expecting at all. You're not at all expecting that. Right? There's two players there, and they smoked him off. That is... Nightmare scenario for the play that Kerrigan was making, right? Nightmare fuel. But he's like, there was 20, there was like 18 seconds. Him going back A isn't going to make it better. Like, he's already, he's already committed to this play. Kerrigan cannot go back A at that point, okay? I forgot there's a part two of this demo. So I'm just going to show you this real quick. Um, and then we'll switch over. Kerrigan, okay, there's 30 seconds. He, 
generally he can't go back A. He really can't. But like the utility here, FaZe have an okay amount of utility. They had more than I remembered actually. But they're still 4v5. They still have they have an op, which means they can't do like a great exec. FaZe have been really good against execs. And if there's 4A, they're fucked, right? And not only that, but FaZe or VP. Phase, I guarantee you FaZe keeps track of this. How much utility have VP thrown on A so far? The answer is not much, okay? And and Kerrigan's already committed by the time that that, um, that last piece of utility just gets thrown. Like, the answer is not much utility was thrown up until that point. So the idea that, that VP is four on A is weighing very heavily. I, I That is likely... Kerrigan's thinking... I'm... I'm I'm certain Kerrigan was thinking they were very like like he was thinking most likely they're four A. So he wants to go back and try and figure something out to try and get something. And the way that smoke was thrown would even further confirm that. Kerrigan kinda got through in front of that too, by the way. He saw where that smoke was thrown as it was thrown. So he kinda got through in front of it, and he might have been thinking he could even kill this player, because that usually what you do is you throw that smoke and then you might rotate out of there because your opponents can see where you threw that smoke from a lot of the time. So you might rotate out of that position. Um You might even rotate out of that position to um, so your your opponents like don't just know exactly what you're doing. I yeah I don't know I, I I remember the casters were like questioning that and I can see why that that does look weird and at the moment I was questioning it too right but looking at it like looking at it specifically I really like that play. I I like the fundamentals behind the play. Okay, the play obviously failed even though they won. Did it obviously fail? It kind of still worked. Because it did force Jame, but Jame did not need to, like, move. But it still did prompt, a, like, a slight movement from Jame that should have given them a kill that should have converted into a round one. So, Rain didn't get the kill. However, it set them up in a position where, like, with exactly what happened, if Rain had just not whiffed, it would have gotten the kill. But I mean, the, the I'm, like, justifying why, like, yeah. They should have won the round. I mean, like... They did win the round, sorry. But I'm just like thinking about, should they have won the round off that? Probably not. But I, I really like the idea because you have to take some risks, man. Sometimes like when you're getting run over on B, and, and look, VP is a team that will do these types of things, right? VP is a team that will do these gamble stacks even when they're up in players. They'll do these plays. They're not scared of like doing like pivots into heavy stacks to get aggressive, stuff like that. You know, they're not scared of that type of thing. So sometimes when you when you're just getting run over in banana, you do absolutely just have to take some risks. You have to take some risks sometimes. You have to gamble. Okay, we just got destroyed on banana. We lost the player. We lost a bunch of utility too. We don't have great utility. I don't. Kerrigan had zero utility when he walked over to B. We don't have a ton of utility. We have an op. So like an exec isn't necessarily the best thing ever. How can we try and draw? The goal there, the goal is a lot of the time to draw them into awkward situations so that your players can can out aim them. Can, can have opportunities to hit nice shots. And that's not always going to work, right? Like, it's important to remember, if you play some of the way FaZe plays, like the stylistic choices they make, some of those plays, like, if you play a team that just out-aims you, sometimes you're just going to fucking lose. Like, you set yourself, you set your, if your goal is to set your players up into good engagements, what you're often doing is you're going to be setting your team up into like 55, 45 engagements. You're going to be setting them up into engagements that they have a slight advantage, but it's not like it's not like Donk can't just run around the corner and destroy you, right? Like you're set. I think a lot of the way Phase plays is like setting, like draw, like um, stringing their opponent out. Is that the right word? Like you're trying to like draw your opponent out of their stacks, out of their setups, out of the plays they want to be in to. Force them into aim duels that your teammates are ready for, and when your team, if your teammates win them, then you snowball that into a good mid round call that that is a really great way to close out the round. But this is um, I kind of think sometimes that Kerrigan calls at times very similar to FNS, and FNS the NA player, and I know I knew everyone's gonna be NA bias. Didn't you say Shroud is like similar to Donk somehow? Which is like not really what I said, but those words did come out of my mouth before clarifying. Uh, <laughs> FNS was a player as as an IGL that was amazing at mid rounds, 
And what what I always felt like is if you could put FNS, if you could get them FNS into a 4v4, he would win you the round like a stupid amount of the time. But it required his team getting a kill. And that was sometimes hard because he often didn't have the best teams, right? His individuals weren't always the best. But if you could get FNS, if you could get him on a team and you could get him a play that got you into a 4v4, he would win you that fucking round so much of the time. And I feel like that's similar with Kerrigan. Like, if you get him into a 4v4 where they have some map control, like a, a good spot, like a reasonable spot, he's going to convert that round way more often than should be converted. You know, then it's, it's just like, he's going to convert those tiny advantages so fucking often. And FaZe is like the perfect team for Kerrigan for, for that style. I don't know, maybe Kerrigan would disagree with this if he saw it. Maybe he would maybe he would think that like that's not his style at all. But that's just what I what I feel from Kerrigan. Um is that like FaZe is the perfect team for that because FaZe is great at like aimers. So you just like you you just draw some slight openings where your team can, you know, find like force a gap where they can get a kill, turn it into a 4v4, and then you just like you, you convert that. And the players are amazing at it, too. The players know exactly how those kills are going to gonna pivot things. Brokey getting that kill on Jame was huge because he knew how Jame was going to respond. And then the, the pivot into the A hit it was so good. I, I can't believe I'm still talking about You guys are all the fucking tuned out. You guys tuned out. I've been talking about this for 15 minutes. You guys all left. You're gone. I'm alone. I'm talking to myself now. I don't know, man. I love Counter-Strike, dude. I, this is the stuff that I love about Counter-Strike. Not like this shit where you're like, how good is your aim? Because you... How kids, your aim, bro. You shoot me in the head? Vu, you can't shoot me in the head better. So you don't know what you're talking about. This is the interesting part. That's a nice flash. I like that flash. That's Coolio. There's the smoke. VP throw that smoke and they don't immediately pounce. That's something I've seen teams... It feels almost intentional. It, it, it almost feels like a bait for those nades. Like... When you play a team that you know loves to nade smokes like that, why not just like throw the smoke and then, cause you don't need uh, smokes. VP could throw this and then go B, right? Like VP has banana, that's the key. That's why I talk about this so much. If you have banana and bracket control, bracket being top mid, people, these are the brackets. I think that's, people ask me this all the If you have banana and bracket control, the CTs are on a fucking string. You can play them like a fiddle. If, if the CTs, if you both know it, right? If the CTs, like what happened in the round I was talking about, where the CTs took banana and they backed up, it's different. You can play the CTs like a fiddle. Because they could throw this and then just go B, right? There's, it is a decent commitment, but there's nothing saying they can't go B. So you could just like stop here for a second and wait, but they weren't like full committing to the wait. They weren't, uh, yeah, they weren't like overly staying. It was, he was trying to swing out Norbert's was swinging out um they might have a flash you this is a, one of the greatest places to throw a flash because this feels good this angle feels good but it actually isn't that great of an engagement i don't think it's not nearly as good as people think like you can definitely lose this if someone on balcony or if someone's pit especially you can for sure lose that right so a flash over here is so strong especially like an opera here just fucks your day up um but i think they might already know broke B. Anyways, they still have Fame is ready for that library swing through. This is exactly what you do in CSGO too, by the way. You would have this guy. He might walk up a little bit closer. He's a little far back, but usually you would... I think he might be far back just because he's covering both. I think he might have been far back specifically because he was covering both the library pushout and the arch walkthrough. Because if you're here, if the guy walks through arch, you, you can see him and you pivot and you turn. If you're here, the guy walks through arch and you die. Um, so he might have been worried about both. But that is something you do in CSGO. That's just, uh, it's a theory. It's a theory. I think teams might start doing that a little bit more. The, the, the delayed, the delayed exec, where you're, you're not re-execing, a re-exec being like you throw those utility, wait, and then you throw them again and go, you try and draw out their utility. You could throw those utility, wait 10 seconds, and then go. And the idea is like, well, if they're going to nade out the smokes, we're going to be ready for that. I think teams do that a little bit on like, uh, on nuke with outer smokes. I think I've seen teams that are look like they're ready like they look like they're throwing the smokes and then they're like blow this shit i dare you i double dog dare you to blow out this smoke we're ready for it you got your five players we got five ops behind the smoke blow out the smoke i fucking dare you i feel like i've seen that maybe not verbatim i don't think they said those words <laughs> i don't think those words were said but i think i've i feel like i've seen teams like with that vibe you know maybe teams will start doing that more that'd be interesting anyways if you enjoyed the content, 
you you want your own demo review where I talk about your gameplay and maybe more about the specifics and less about the macro and why and why Kerrigan's the goat. Um, you can go to my Patreon, patreoncom vucsgo and uh, request a demo review for money. It costs money. Otherwise, check out a, another video on my channel and uh, join my Discord. Follow me on Twitter, whatever. Thanks for watching.